Nick, how are you doing? Yeah, good, good, good. We're just talking about your obsession and uh, how much oh. self-control you have. So let's start with that, self-control. Yeah, um, my mom, uh, so just to give everyone context, uh, we, we've chosen the wrong day to record more podcasts today because the 90-second trailer for OK in season two dropped. And uh, I, I YouTube fan analysis and season two theories videos are calling me like, and uh, my mom says to me this morning, do you have no willpower? I'm like, no, I don't have any willpower. I just, I don't. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's actually good to have that kind of session about things because it kind of shows we are human beings. So that, that's, that's probably a good thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, but, I'm just uh, kind of mad, mad max. I'm going to see the first day first. For sure, and my wife was like, "Why are you dragging me into this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, well, it's Mad Max. You have to watch it." <laughs> yeah, um, I I sent this through uh, the the trailer through to my wife, and I could hear her eyes roll from 14 kilometers away because she's I, she's like, "I don't understand your obsession." Um, but yeah, uh, maybe it's midlife crisis is hitting me hard. So. Um, but whatever, you know, in, in today's day and age, we've got so little to, to cling to hope and all that kind of thing that whatever makes you happy, just like, just roll with it. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, if geeky items didn't excite us, then, then we aren't geek solving. You know, we, we need to yeah. be obsessing about these things, right? That's, that's the, <laughs> the job description as a world for geek. Well, exactly. And uh, yeah, speaking of geeks, let's dive into today's episode because um, Apple, we're going to be, t we're talking about Apple today and uh, that's a whole different set of geeks all on their own. So um, we're, we're going to chat about the, the WWDC 2024 and Apple is set to unveil the, the latest updates to their software and possibly some groundbreaking AI advancements as well. So um, it's pretty obvious that they're aiming to enhance AI capabilities, and there's obviously rumors as well with a potential partnership with OpenAI on the horizon. So what are your initial thoughts on um, on the Apple geeks? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the more refined version of geek, geekism, as it were, the, the Apple geeks, um, but equally <laughs> geeks, I mean, they're kind of geeks, as it were. Uh, that's always nice to have to, to, to talk about, but... Uh, well, let's see, Apple is a very interesting scenario where the last few years, especially after Steve Jobs, it's not a, been only about sort of the hardware, the software being released, it's how they release it, the partnerships, famously search engine, not that thing. Uh, Google has been their preferred choice, and I believe Google pays them for having search engine integrated into Apple. And similarly, you know, I, I would not say the software is groundbreaking. It never was, uh, but it's it's sleek. It works really well. It's simple to use. It's intuitive. That's the superpower. And it's, at the end, adapted by the masses. And that's where Apple has its flagship abilities, which, you know, let, let, let's face it, you know, that's not true for Android phones, for example. Apple has mm -hmm. that. And similarly, even with, the fragmented PC market, yes, on Windows, and but, but there's still many manufacturers, whereas Apple owns the end-to-end -end experience. That's what makes them Apple. Mm. So, well, what they do, they, they go, go integrate into uh, into new provider. Um, obviously, the choice uh, is OpenAI. Sam Walton was there at the conference as well. I, I saw his picture in... I think it was a bright blue or bright green shirt. Uh, so, you know, he was there in, in, in his full, full form. It's interesting. I, I believe it's a right move. Open, open AI's product is by far the better offering. The, the latest 4.0 4 is, is definitely better in every category, as it were. They're better than the open source for sure. So Llama, et cetera, et cetera, out. It's interesting, though, that obviously there's a big investment by Microsoft into ChatGPT and OpenAI, but they still went ahead with Apple. So all really interesting. There's a lot of talk about this, so I'm going to let you sort of deep, dive deeper into the questions, perhaps, Megan, but it's a very interesting move by both Apple and OpenAI. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, let's discuss that um, because you've just mentioned, obviously, that uh, there's an existing partnership between um, Microsoft uh, and and OpenAI. Uh, is it going? To, is there going to be like exclusive uh, exclusivity on on deals or on services available? Um, how how is it going to work? So so far, there's no exclusivity as such, as, as far as I can I can tell. But the approach which the two companies, Microsoft and Apple, have taken is, is vastly different. So with Microsoft, they've chosen to do a lot of the stuff on Edge as Edge AI, which is in-built chips, but also in cloud. A lot of it seems to be in the cloud, whereas Apple is super protective of its users' data. So the, the majority of the processing happens on their new chips the Apple chips, which are in the computer. And if that can't solve the problem, it goes out to the Apple Silicon, so which is like in the Apple infrastructure hosted stuff. And if that doesn't work, then with the user's permission, so there will be a pop-up saying, we're now asking to log into ChatGPT, or use ChatGPT, are you okay with that? And then it embarks on that next journey. So there are three layers of protection there. One is on device, so it's user's device protected, then goes to the Apple infrastructure in the cloud, and then finally goes to chat GPT. Whereas with Microsoft, that's not the case. There isn't any explicit discussion about protection of the user's data, which is a very interesting maneuver and a very interesting move from Apple to protect its user's data. People do care about it because at the end of the day, the AI will knows a lot about us as we query, as we ask questions, as we solve the big problems. So it's an interesting approach, and this is a, a much stronger relationship than one can one could have imagined. They really have taken the, the time to think about the architecture and to protect the user's data. It, it's a deep integration, not just a surface level API integration as such. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, you've mentioned before that Apple's kind of historical strength has been hardware innovation. I mean, uh, the release of the iPhone in, I think, 2007 completely just revolutionized um, the the industry. Um, what do you think has uh, kind of contributed to their perceived lag in AI research compared to their competitors? So Apple has been trying. It's not not because of lack of trying. They have been trying. They've been trying to work on, I believe, a AI powered car, um, AI itself built in its labs. They spend billions on the experimentation, and unfortunately, it hasn't worked for them. And these are the, the rumors. Obviously, Apple will not confirm or deny, but they, you know, they haven't been able to build their own AI. So in the short term, they've chosen to go with third-party players, again, that's not unusual. Apple does that. At the end of the day, for them, it's the experience which counts. So they've chosen to go with OpenAI. But this is not the only deal they might have. They will keep it open. In fact, in the videos which they launched with the, the launch of this, this news, they also talked about allowing other AI tools like Gemini it placed in the ecosystem as well. So we might have other players coming in to the ecosystem and using their AI. But as I mentioned before in the previous podcast, it's a black box. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, it doesn't matter whether it's, it's, it's open AI or Gemini for the end user, there are still problems. And in this case with Apple Intelligence, which is the other AI we're talking about today, <laughs> Apple Intelligence, it's about that. It's exactly about that. It's, it's about solving people's problems. They want to make easy emojis using AI well, you can use now that DVD powered Apple innovation, but for the end user, they don't care. It's OpenAI or Gemini. They have a problem to solve. If the email gets, gets condensed into shorter email or funnier email, that's work done. Who did it? They don't care. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, there's been a lot of speculation and a lot of rumors about the AI enhancements in um, iOS 18. Um, and the revitalization of uh, Siri as well. What specific AI features or improvements would you consider critical for Apple to regain its competitive edge in this section of the market? Firstly, I'm sure every Siri user will be delighted to hear that finally <laughs> we have something a bit more smarter than what it was. <laughs> it's been 
I mean, I don't, I'm not a big Apple user. I only use my iPad, which is my, which is my main tool when I travel or when, I, when I'm at work. But seeing this, it's terrible. It, most people have turned, turned it off on their, on their phones, on their iPads, because it doesn't work. And stay, so is, yeah, same is true for even Alexa from, from Amazon or Google's voice uh, command control AI. It's, it's terrible. So glad there's a bit of innovation there. I hope that they integrate the Whisper, which is open AI's voice tool, and make it better and smarter. Because at the moment, it's unusable. And look at how good open AI is. Actually, majority of times when I prompt, I don't use, I don't type. I either use voice or I use screenshots because I'm lazy like other users. I don't want to type stuff, right? Who wants to type things? So <laughs> it's really great that it can do that. It can talk back to, back to you. I'm currently experimenting with another third-party tool called Grok, G-R-O-Q, which is a another high-speed AI tool, for lack of better words. And it's, it's great. I think the end of the day, voice is a big part of how we interact as human beings. Typically, when I talk to somebody in the office, it's still a, a voice call or a video call. It's not typing. And I don't, don't think most people like typing. It's just a means to an end. It's not the preferred way. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the, the multimodal capability. I'm excited about the upgrade to, to Siri, upgrade to what you can do, for example. You can take pictures, perhaps, or talk talk through what you have in the fridge and then get a recipe, for example, things which you, we should have had in the Apple ecosystem for many, many months, quarters, years. Finally, it's that. Hopefully, yeah. very soon. <laughs> Um, well, fingers crossed. Um, uh, that's probably a great place to leave it uh, today. Um, so to the, the people listening or watching, um, what AI features or improvements are you most excited to see about uh, upcoming um, in the update? And uh, how do you think these changes could enhance your own daily use of Apple devices? Um, and we'd also love to know uh, what you believe a potential partnership between Apple and o OpenAI could do to help Apple catch up with um, its competitors in the AI industry. So uh, thank you as always for joining us. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, uh, join the conversation by leaving a comment or popping us a DM. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you in the next episode, Raj. Thank you, Megan. See you soon.